Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond, and in this video, I'm going to do an unboxing of the Tales from the Loop, the board game by Free League Publishing. This was successfully kickstarted. There are also a couple of smaller expansions available for the game, and it is, of course, based on the popular RPG. If you'd like to know more about the RPG, I also have a video on that. You can click the I in the corner of this video, and that'll take you there, and I'll share my thoughts on the Tales from the Loop RPG. Now, before I open up the box, I'd like to point you towards my Patreon page, because if you'd like to support what I do, which really helps my channel, you can check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description below, and you can also click the link at the end of this video. And there you can see how you can support me for as little as just $1 a month or more, and you'll get your name in the credits of all of my YouTube videos, as well as access to some Patreon exclusive videos. And that is greatly, greatly appreciated. It. All right, let's open up the box, see what's inside. All right, let's take a look at the box first. You have the amazing artwork by Simon Stallenhag on the cover of the box with the logo Free League here. I love the colors, the light blue and the pink in the sky, all the snow, and the three cooling towers of the loop facility. We just have the tails from the loop on all the sides there. And on the back of the box, <clears throat> we've got the game board. We've got some of the miniatures here and uh, the player boards. Just a couple of components that are shown here with the cards on the board and a bit of a backstory here. So yeah, that's it. Uh, it's a game for two to five players, ages 14 and up, which plays in about 180 minutes, which is quite long for uh, a board game, I think. Uh, right, let's uh, open up the box. All right, well, inside, first of all, of course, we find the rule book, which is not a very thick rule book, which is good. It means the game doesn't have too many rules to learn. We've got uh, the character standees, the machine figures, we've got dice, which is great, which you can also use for the RPG. Uh, we've got tokens, all kinds of tokens, cubes. We've got plenty of cards, player dashboards. So that is all listed here. Welcome to the loop, again with the great art. With an overview and how to win and the order of play. We have the setup with the uh, Malaran Isles in color, which I kind of like. It's different from the maps uh, in the RPG. We've got event locations. We've got uh, the rules, how to play the game, of course. Your dashboard explained here. So your kids in the 80s that never were. We've got machine abilities. How a round works. You get the school phase. <laughs> of course you do. School events, not on weekends, machine movement, alert states, hacking. Then we have the adventure phase. We've got a dice pool, we've got items, very colorful cards there. Pushing, just like in the RPG, if you fail, you can push your rolls. It's pretty cool, you can get conditions as well. Uh, avoiding machines, look at all that, all these these terms. All right. Home for dinner. You need to be home for dinner or you get, you know, penalty points or something. And there's even an index in the back there. It's very handy. And the table of contents is on the back. All right. All right. That looks well explained. We even have a booklet with the world of the loop, which is pretty cool. Different art here. Again with the three towers, pretty cool. The world of the loop. And this looks exactly like pages in the RPG book, which you can check out. I have a review of it. If you click the eye in the corner of this video, I've reviewed the uh, Tales from the Loop RPG. And uh, we've browsed through the book. <clears throat> and I believe this is literally a section of that book. It certainly looks like it. 
Yeah, I, I, I believe, maybe not with the, uh, the schematics there, but the rest of it looks very familiar. It might even have the schematics, I just don't remember. And the backers of the board game on Kickstarter, because this was a Kickstarted game. Here is the RPG with one of the uh, expansion books. There are more, which I also covered in, in a video on my channel. We have some reference sheets, looks like, and these are made of a thicker kind of cardboard, which is really nice. So we've got the dice pool, home for dinner, combos, etc. Conditions, tokens, summary. So a double-sided summary sheet. That's pretty interesting. All right, cool. So we have two of those, which you can have on either side of the table for reference. That's handy. We got some dials here. That's interesting. All right, we got plenty of tokens. Let me take a closer look at that. So we have some bushes there, some of these strange looking dinosaurs. We got the robots. This looks like some NPC, just like that one, like an engineer and a police officer. And there's footprints in the snow here. There's a Poor teddy bear with a gun pointed at him. Oh no. And we have these two dials. And these are all double sided. All right, so we have that. <clears throat> then we have the uh, kids' standees, which looks pretty cool with, again, art. Also from the uh, RPG book, only this is in color, full color. We're really nice. We have these tiles. These locations, which are, I presume, ties, tiles that you place on the board. We have an ID card here. You have these symbols. Don't know what those are for. They have a question mark on the back. So these are all orange. So that might be like randomized or something. More tokens here. Very colorful, different kinds of tokens. So that also looks interesting. We have one of those hover. Uh, machines there, magnetrine ship, All right? Oh, and these are like, like, kind of like domino. <laughs> they are blank on the back, so that's interesting. Now we got the board. It's a pretty filled box. <clears throat> ah, and you actually have these dials on the board. That's interesting. So you put those on the board. And the board looks really nice and colorful. So we have spots for all of these card decks here, the school draw deck and discard pile and the rumor draw deck. And then there's four spots. I presume you got four rumors that you can work on. Then you have all these different towns. That's really cool. And the Bona Tower is there. Magnetrine dogs, Davin factory. So cool. And I like that they kind of put like uh, details of those locations on the map. That looks really cool. This is actually one of the nicest maps I've seen so far of the Malaran Islands. Uh, and I've played the RPG. <laughs> this is pretty cool. There's a weekly schedule over there. All right. Nice. That's a, that's a good looking board. I like it. Then we have this tray, which seems to be very functional. It has a uh, lid. This got moved around a little, but we have these um, machine boards. The par hoofer, double-sided. Is it different? Yes, it kind of is. This has two firewalls and this has three. So I'm guessing, oh, it's the number of players, right? So this is two and three players. And this is if you're playing with four or five players, it's a little bit more difficult. Here's another one. This is alpha, this is the beta. We have an alpha and a beta fire guard. Again, with a uh, two to three and a four to five player side. We have the watchdogs, droids. And we have the AMAT 2 um, 
military droid. So we have all of those. This one got smooshed us just a little bit. Straighten that out. And then we have the player boards, which are nice and thick cardboard. Just check that out, how, how thick that is. This is a double layered because, as you can see, they have these slots where you can put your action cubes. So that's pretty cool. You can put stuff in there. Lena, the popular girl. <laughs> Has all of these skills. Sasha, the computer geek, and they all have different skills, I guess. Uh, they have the same conditions. Spend time. Yeah, well, they have the, these are different. <laughs> Clever and dull, charming and slow. He's got a Commodore 64. <laughs> I love that. Nils the weirdo. Stefan the jock. Veronica the metalhead. Clara the bookworm. <laughs> and Jonas the hick. <laughs> Alex the troublemaker. And that's that. So we have all of those characters straight from the RPG, which I really like. Uh, we got some additional alpha and beta stickers. Um, don't know what those are for. I'll have to look that up. We got the dice. Some really cool looking dice D6s, one through six, with the six having the Rick's energy symbol there, which is cool. And again, you can use these for the RPG as well. We have the stands, of course, for the player standees. Uh, we have these to uh, put the dials on the board. We have the action cubes, plenty of orange ones, and also some black and plenty of white ones. All right. So those go here. Everything has its own spot. So we got these spots, I guess, for either the standees or the tokens, or maybe, you know, both. I'll, I'll check out how I can best divide them. We got some small cards here. I'll open that up. All right, so we, this is basically two decks. We've got items and we got anomalies. So I'll check these first, the anomalies. So we have bison boars, decoy. We've got a, like a fake ID or something. <laughs> Machine SKP, Machine Mind, a Pet Raptor, <laughs> Machine Arm, cool, Eggvious Optimus, <laughs> that's super cool, Transformer, Biological Sample, Control Glove for the Par Hoofer, Magnetrine Disc, Brain in a Jar, Dino Claw, Power Accu, Communicator, Unstable Compound, Rick's Energy Binder, Remote View Helmet, Damage Droid, Loop Facility Map, and an alien? Question mark? That's pretty interesting. So we have those, and I guess if you sleeve them, you've got plenty of room to put them back. There's two slots. And then these items, we, we got Hairspray, which is a combustible <laughs> with fire. Or you can use them with a computer or with... Uh, as, as chemicals. It's pretty interesting. So you have different combinations you can make. Here's a lighter. Cool. A bike. Computer. Oh, it's a VIC-20. That looks like a Commodore 64. I'm sorry. That is a Commodore 64. <laughs> Maybe the VIC-20 looks just the same. I, I never had one. An AV cable. Freestyle. <laughs> cool. Nice. Uh, classic. We we had these in yellow back in the day. These Walkman. <laughs> the same. Yeah, this is just the same. It's really cool. Boombox. Yummy bubble. <laughs> cool. Bubblegum. Pocket knife. Baseball bat. Firecracker. Sneakers. Zippo there. Eyeliner. Lowrider bike. Hockey stick. Another computer. 
again looks like a Commodore 64 now with a floppy instead of the cassette biology boken <laughs> school books more cables and glue so that is pretty cool all of these old school items we got a lot of more cards look at that these big stacks of cards and again plenty of room if you sleeve them to put them in here like like that so let's take a look at these cards so these are different decks we have a school deck we have some um, cards for the uh, different well robots uh, c scenarios i think firestarter bought a mock mystery islands jungle fever the light fantastic <laughs> the disc world books the passenger electric bully so these seem to be scenario specific cards and then we have these location cards with the art from the maps and there's letters on them as well so we have all of that there's plenty of those <clears throat> and yeah, I don't know. There's stuff you can find there. I wonder if there are if they're all unique. I don't think so. I might have seen some letters. So yeah, see here. There's F again. So this has running the gauntlet, and this has burnt workshed. So there's different things that you can find in the same locations. So I'm not going to spoil all of those. I'm just going to show you the backs, which are very pretty. And that's a whole, whole lot of that's a giant deck of different cards with uh, all of these things that can happen on them. So that's pretty interesting. It's really nice. All right, let's uh, check out the school cards. <clears throat> so again, things that can happen there. Bullies, flea market, sensor sweep, detention. All right, so we have those type of cards. We've seen these. Let's open up this and more of these, it seems. I'll open those up as well. All right, so these are not all this type of cards. So we have these plenty still, quite a lot of these cards, which I will just put with the others. Then we have uh, the robot cards. So the watchdogs, the fire guard, Again, the Power Hoofer twice, the Emat, another Watch Dogs, another Fire Guard. Don't know if they need to be in order or not, but. And I wonder, are they like the same? No, they are different. And there's something else on the back, which is also different. So, okay. They have, I, I guess this is like their AI or something. They have different behavior, so we have those. Then we've got different kinds of cards, Smolders, Inferno, Heat Central. I don't know what that does. They all have a B on them and an A on the other side. Okay, so an A and a B situation there. <laughs> then we've got, what's that? Hmm, interesting. This is an A side, and the B side is just a part of the map. This also with an A and a B side. So more AB cards. I guess this is just more of those than... Wow, it is quite a lot. Plenty, plenty of cards. So I'll just put those with the rest. Then. Oh, I think they all belong together. Then we have chores. Plenty of cards with chores that the kids need to do dog walking mowing the lawn <laughs> making new friends family night out all right so we have the chores and we have the school cards so plenty of different kinds of interesting cards with nice illustrations i like <clears throat> i like the way they look Nice and colored. And that leaves us with the miniatures. So we get a separate tray here, and I don't think there's anything underneath. No, there is not, so 
all of that will fit in this tray. Get the tape off here. If I can, I'll just grab the knife. That did the trick. Now, I don't know, but is this a spot where there's supposed to be a miniature? Or is that room for the expansions? For like the, the dinosaur and something else? I don't know. Because this doesn't really fit there. Because we did have the... Uh, if I check the robots again, I think we had one of these. Because that's a... Uh, two of these, I'm sorry. There's, there's two of these. There's two of these. There was only one of these and one of these, if I recall correctly. So I'm not sure what this is for. Might be for an expansion that they just made a slot. I'll have to figure that out. But uh, yeah, well, you know what? Let's let's take a closer look at these. <clears throat> so that's the uh, the fire droid, which is pretty cool. They're pretty big. They put out forest fires and such. Really cool looking. Walking movement. So we have two of those. Then we have this par hoofer, kind of like a utility droid that you can control with a backpack. Two big legs and an, an arm there in the middle. Okay, so we have two of those. We have these scouting droids, two on one base. Looking pretty good. Oh, focus. And we have this military droid. There we go. A little bit of a broken thing there. So I'll have to be careful with that. That looks pretty cool as well. All right, so those are the miniatures you get with the game. And just to be sure, I think that is correct because it also tells you here that these are the minis. And in the rule book, we had uh, an overview of what you get. Six machine figures, so that is indeed six figures. So yeah, I'm guessing it's for um, the expansions. All right, cool. So that is that, and that fits in here nicely. And that's everything that's in the box. All right, so that was my unboxing of Tales from the Loop, the board game by Free League Publishing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and check out my Patreon page by clicking the link in the description below or the icon at the end of this video and see how you can support what I do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.